Hello again. Hi Lucy. See if you won't be so distracting. So we're still in the Carson Sink. We're still near Chirupa Flat. Um, we're a couple of kilometers away from the Salt Rail Wells Beach Barrier. But more importantly, I think we're something like five meters lower. And so um, John Bell was the first one who's worked on these the little stickers from the Russian thistle. Um, these deposits, and because uh, he's mapped the, this quadrangle, the uh, both quadrangles, the Lahontan Mountains and the Grimes Point quads uh, that came out uh, from the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology in 2010, I think, something like that. And so anyway, he was uh, poking around here in this little wash, and he has found um, these inner beds of sands and, and more silts, but um, there are these dark bands in here. Lucy's probably in the way. Come over here. These dark bands um, have concentrations of organic material in, in them. That's what makes them dark. Some people refer to those as black mats. And so the radiocarbon ages of, of, of these sediments, I think, are something like, uh, you know, he dug down deeper, and, and I've done some dating out in this wash as well. Um, I can't recall the dates, but they were pretty similar to the ones John got. Something like 5,000 years be, uh, before present, um, a meter down or something, and, and this stuff is, is 2,000, 1,800 years, something like that. So still late Holocene. They don't have, in this stack, um, people haven't dated yet the 850-year-old uh, guy, basically the, the medieval pluvial that I was talking about. If those deposits are here, there'd be somewhere up here, but there's this unconformity right here. And this is probably the surface sand um, that is, is blowing around out here. Not sure, quite sure what to make of it. But these deposits, these greenish ones, have um, these shells fragments in it. And some of them are pretty big. And these are a type of mussel, and it's referred to as Anadonta californiensis. Basically, we used to call them clams, but um, clams are symmetrical and mussels have an offset um, hinge along their long axis, something like that. So these are actually mussels, and they're good radiocarbon dating targets. So that's what they were based on. And so John's interpretation of this um, section, John Bell from the Bureau, was uh, that these were lake, th these kind of green things, because these also have shells in it, th this unit. And that these black mats, and then I guess there's about two of them if, if you dig down a little bit more. Um, those were, I think he said, overbank deposits. I shouldn't be putting words in his mouth. From a river or something, that like, like a, a floodplain or something like that. Um, but the problem I have with that interpretation is that there's no real river around here. And so um, sometimes people find black mats in old groundwater discharge or spring de deposits. And what it's telling you is that it was probably permanently watered, um, enough water for vegetation to grow. And, and, and so the, the dying vegetation builds up carbon in um, the sediments and, and they turn dark because um, carbon looks dark in sediments. And so um, that, was, that was John's interpretation. I guess um, based on this elevation, which is I think is 1194, I have to check the LIDAR if this uh, made it into the Fallon LIDAR data set, or just come out here and survey it. But it's above the elevation of the channel that runs between Carson Lake and the Carson Sink, which is at 1194. It's a little bit above that. And so this would have to be an inundation not from a river, but I think from a lake transgressing over the surface. And so it may be that, that this represents deeper water. Um, this is all of stuff. And these black mat kind of things represent kind of a, a permanent wetland marsh where maybe the water was however deep it is to, uh, for all this vegetation to grow and, and for it to be stable long enough for it to grow. So. Um, I've sampled this and I, I've, I've looked through it. I tried to um, sieve it, wet sieve it, to pick out um, any particular like seeds or, or pieces of a plant that I could identify. Um, but I was not so far successful. So I might, might try it again. 
So this is another part of the Holocene um, story out here, the late Holocene, because all these sediments, which I think are interbedded lake sediments, um, they go back to about 5,000 years, and um, we just were on top of an 850-year-old shoreline, a medieval pluvial ice dam. But there is other evidence that around 1,500 years ago, there was a lake that was almost as large. Um, that evidence is out at the Wildcat Scarp another site that um, John Bell worked on in the early 1980s. This one was much later that he worked on. But anyway, he's been around a while now. He's just retired, I think, a week ago. Good for him. Wish him luck. So uh, what else do we want to say about this? We can walk around here a little bit just because the lighting is really nice and um, kind of see what we're going to see. I think we'll see some more black mats. So this channel here that we're in, um, it heads a few hundred meters upstream in that direction. And it's basically uh, pirating a little playa. And, that'll, and it sort of seems like it's sourced by a road that crosses um, this wash. And if that's the case, this might be sort of a little historical feature that uh, hasn't been around for that long. So we're walking downstream in this little wash. Lots of shell fragments weathering out of, of these little um, walls here. All right. That's about enough of that. 